Hi, this is John Weber with TechNection, and today I want to talk about a simple camera latency measurement technique using OpenCV in Python. So first, why is low latency important? Well, latency from the image sensor to the application layer of the processor, the host processor, is just the first step in a long series of potential uh, stages in a video processing pipeline. In the case of, say, robotic surgery, the physician performing the surgery is counting on camera data coming from robotic arm or the endoscopes that are in the patient to actually provide data very, very close to exact real time because that's how the physician or the surgeon is steering the instruments and, and scalpels and other things. In ADAS applications, automobiles are using cameras in real time to be able to make decisions regarding braking, lane departure warnings, and things of that nature. So latency is obviously very important in those applications. And in teleoperation applications where an operator is looking through a first-person view camera in, in applications such as drones or in the operator is remotely operating the robotic system and is counting on very, very fast latency or very, very low latency from the camera to the operator in order to count on the fact that when they make a control input that that control input is going to be accurate and not incredibly delayed between the operator and the robotic system. So what is the objective of our test? Well first we want it to be simple um, we want to be accurate. We want to use common APIs and frameworks. We don't want to have to install a lot of special software or uh, platform specific software. We want to use common APIs. So we want to use things like Python. In this case, we want to use OpenCV um, for the computer vision part of this. We want to work with most V4L2 cameras. Um, I, won't, I won't say all V4L2 cameras because there certainly may be some that this won't work with, but we want to work with most V4L2 cameras. And in the case of, of many Linux applications, um, almost all uh, sensors are V4L2 devices, so this should be working with most. We want this to be very repeatable as well, so that when we make software updates or changes to hardware or we're adding a new sensor, we know what the latency is and we know we're not having or making any changes that are going to have a negative impact on that latency. So let's define latency. In this case, we're going to define latency as the time that something changes in front of the image sensor to the time that that change is reflected in frames captured and are available for processing by the application layer. This is a very useful latency definition in most cases because uh, useful image processing is not being done until after the image is actually in user space. So. This is what we think is the most useful measurement of latency. So what is the premise? Well, in order to measure latency, you have to have a stimulus. You have to have something in front of the image sensor in order to control what you are providing as an input. And then the next thing you need to do is you need to be able to measure the output. In this case, we're just capturing received frames. So we will change something in front of the image sensor. So it's a light or a display. And then we will capture frames and we'll do a comparison in terms of timestamps from when the stimulus occurred to when that stimulus is reflected in received image frames. Let's talk about the inspiration for all of this. I found a medium article. You can see the link here in the below, a guy named Hacker Noon. You can see the original source here. It was really everything we needed to do all wrapped up in a nice Python script. He was using, in this case, you can see this, uh, this image uh, in the upper right hand side. He was essentially taking a webcam and positioning it in front of a window and he would control the window uh, the brightness of the window um, using this Python application. So in this case, the window is functioning as the stimulus to the to the image sensor for the purpose of this measurement. As he changes the image in the window, he timestamps that change, and then that change is reflected back in the image sensor, and he just does some analysis on the images as they are received, and he calculates the latency that way. So this was actually a, an excellent starting point for us in our whole project here. However, it does have a couple of drawbacks. Well, well, first of all, the advantage is there's no additional hardware needed. You just need a display, which in many embedded targets, um, there is a display port. Not all embedded targets, but many. The drawbacks are that when you are rendering to the display, the Python script actually has to call a, a function to render that window. 
and there's going to be some amount of processing delay between the time that that function is called to the time that the window appears on the user interface on the actual HDMI display or the display output. There is some rendering error and a display refresh interval that is going to introduce some error in the measurement. The other thing is that this is a single threaded application. When you are using a single thread to process the received frames and to render the output stimulus and to receive the frames, if there is a significant amount of processing required to actually analyze the frame, say in very high definition cases, and if that analysis is longer than say a frame time, so that is going to introduce a bit of error there, which you don't need. You just need to understand understand what the latency is. So we improved upon this latency test slightly. We're doing two things. One is instead of using a display, we want to use an LED as a stimulus. And in, in many embedded vision applications, this is no problem because you can directly control GPIO pins on development kits or on boards in order to be able to uh, light an LED. The other thing is, is we made this multi-threaded. So the capture thread, its only job, right, is to pull in video frames as fast as it can get them. And then it loads those into a queue. The capture thread can run on one processor and the analysis thread, which is actually doing all of the image processing to determine when the image is bright or dark or has exceeded a threshold to say that essentially the light is on or off, that analysis thread runs in a separate processor. And because of that, we can calculate latencies at higher resolutions without causing additional error. So what are the advantages of using an LED as a stimulus? Well, there's no dependency on an external display. So you don't have any issues with buffering, with rendering, with display interval updates. It is nearly instant on. So there is, of course, with any Linux system, well, I wouldn't say any Linux system, in, in the non-real-time implementations of Linux, which most implementations of Linux are non-real-time, you are going to have a little bit of variation in terms of between the time that the GPIO on call is made to the time the actual GPIO turns on. But it's very, very, very small with respect to the actual frame time. The only drawback really is there is additional hardware required. You have to have an LED. You have to have, be able to hold the LED in the camera in place so that when you run the test, um, things are staying in the same place. We've solved this by creating a dark box. There are LED holes on one end of the dark box. There's a bracket on the other end of the dark box that we can very easily mount our cameras to, all the different kinds of cameras that we produce. There is a diffuser in the middle of the dark box that takes the point source from the LED and spreads it out into something that looks like a big spot. We can put a lid on top of that and create a very dark environment for the image sensor to live in so we're not subject to variation in terms of ambient light. So here is our entire test setup. Uh, we are using, in this case, a OneBoard EDMG IMX8 M+. Uh, we can put Tevi image sensors, which are just our little image sensor modules. We can use Vision Link image sensors, which use uh, our implementation of FPD Link 3. And then we also have Vision Cam, which is a USB 3 camera. And then we just have a single white LED on one end of it. So now it's demo time. So I'm going to stop lecturing you at this point and we're going to transition over to the development kit and I'm going to show you how this works with a few different image sensors as well as with our Vision Link camera. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take you through a quick demonstration of how to use this latency uh, utility and this dark box. So what we're going to do is we're going to use three different sensors. I'll have one here, which is the 2.3 megapixel sensor. And then I also have a 1.4 megapixel global shutter and a five megapixel rolling shutter sensor. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and connect these up now. I'm going to use the camera two port or the two, the second camera port on the EDM GMX8 M plus uh, wand board base board. I have the serial console connected in here. I have a network uh, connection here that I'm going to use for uh, SSH terminal. Um, I have the LED for our test connected into here. Um, I'll put the pin information on the LED below, um, but I'm going to show you a little bit about this box now. So I've just gone ahead and connected this in here. Um, this bracket right here uh, just slides into place inside of the box. So I'll take the lid off the box and I'll slide the bracket into place just like that. 
And then here, this is a diffuser. All it, all it does is it takes the light output from the LED and it diffuses it a little bit wider uh, area um, onto uh, the diffuser so that the, the image sensor sees more of a spot than a, than a point source. So you have that, that all just connects into there. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the board. And I'm going to, whoop, hold on a second. I'm gonna go ahead and reboot here because I'm going to show you how to set the device tree up. We've simplified things a little bit. I'm running right now Yocto Hardknot, which is the 5.10 kernel. We have a new set of drivers that we've introduced for the Tevi cameras. Uh, makes things a lot easier to use. So to go ahead and do that, I'm gonna go ahead and just do uh, a fat LS because I, for one, can never remember <laughs> the actual um, the actual device tree overlay name. So fat LS MMC one, I'm booting right now off of the micro SD card. And so I'm looking for this specifically. Uh, so we want to go ahead and use that as the DT overlay. You ignore everything in the beginning and the dot DTBO in the end, all that's automatically, uh, concatenated by, um, some U boot macros. So we're going to go ahead and just set this up. So set V DT overlay. And I'm just gonna go ahead and set that, save end and boot. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. Now this should automatically detect the sensor. Yep, that's right there. Tevi AR0234. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. And I'm also going to go ahead and just SSH into it as well. So I have both at my disposal. Um, SSH can be a little bit easier. So this is my SSH window. This is my terminal window uh, for the serial port. You can see the differences. This is running screen and this is running SSH. So let's go ahead and run the latency tool. So if I just go ahead and hit the, let's go ahead and write CV camera latency underscore MT. The underscore MT means multi-threaded. I'm going to give it the device number, which is dash D1. This corresponds to, I'm just gonna zip on over here, ls slash dev slash video star. This corresponds to slash dev slash video one. So that's the index in the V4L2 list of devices. So um, slash D1, dash D1, I should say. And then I'm going to give it a width and a height, the resolution. So width is going to be 1280. Hot dash dash height is equal to 720. And we're going to go ahead and just run the latency utility now and you'll see what the output is. And you should see the LED start to blink. Oh, just missed it. Right there. You see just blinking just very, very quickly. And when it does, when it actually blinks, it's when the, the latency script utility is, is looking for the frame to go from dark to light. But what we're seeing right here is it looks like we're seeing less than a frame of latency between the time that the LED turns on and the time that the frame is detected that reflects the LED is on. And um, now we're gonna go ahead and change image sensors. So the uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go through that process now. I'm gonna change to the 1.4 or one megapixel image sensor, the AR0144. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'll gracefully power off this time. Okay, let's say we're ready to go. Now we're gonna go ahead and run the same test, same exact parameters. Um, this sensor will support 1280 by 720 resolution. So we're gonna go ahead and run the same exact test. Okay, so here, a little bit of a different behavior with the automatic exposure control. So the, the threshold is at 49 as opposed to uh, before, which is about 97. We can see here that the latency is around two frames. Um, uh, it's a little bit different than the, the 234. Um, again, both of these are global, image global shutter image sensors. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and switch out to the five megapixel sensor now. I'll uh, gracefully exit again. Go 
go ahead and log back in. Now I'm going to go ahead and run the same test again and see what we can see. Okay, so we see our latency at about two frame times here, about 0.06 uh, seconds, 60 milliseconds or so. Let's go ahead and plug in Vision Link here. And one of the reasons why I want to show you Vision Link is because the quickest, lowest latency interface between a camera and a host processor is MIPI CSI2. But one of the downsides of MIPI CSI2 is it is a high speed differential uh, bus that's not designed for long distances. So the longest length that you want to have between the camera and the host processor is about 20 centimeters, 25 centimeters, and that's about the length of this, this cable. However, um, here is a technology that we've been investing in. This is called Vision Link. Um, what it is, is it takes advantage of a technology from TD, TI called FPD Link 3 that uh, is designed for automotive applications and what it is, is you can serialize uh, the high-speed MIPI serial data over one signal, over one signal pair. What is so neat about that is uh, you also can put power over that same um, coax cable. So you can essentially go from, uh, from the host processor to the camera up to 15 meters away with an extremely low latency data link. So let's go ahead and run the latency test again. And we should see the same latency, which is about two frames. Oh, ha. so here's, here's one of the reasons why that failed. Um, I need to give it the different video interface. So this is the first MIPI CSI2, not the second one. So I need to go ahead and do dash D0 here. Now it should work. And there we go between two and one frames of latency over this coax cable. That's pretty cool. Okay, that was the demo and I hoped you liked it. For video length, I only took measurements for 10 seconds, but for better results, we wanted to have more data. So I performed some additional measurements for a 60 second time period on each of the sensors I showed in the demo. As the utility saves the latency data to a CSV file, it is really easy to import that into a spreadsheet and perform some analysis. Here is a histogram showing the results from just the Tevi sensors, just the camera modules. As you can see, the Tevi-02 AR0234 has the lowest latency, less than one frame interval, and it's very, very consistent. There are no samples outside of that. The Tevi-AR0144 and Tevi-AR0521 are both pretty tightly grouped around 55 to 65 milliseconds. Now, let's see how the Tevi-AR0144 and the Vision Link AR0144 look. Keep in mind that the Tevi-AR0144 connects to the host with a short MIPI CSI2 ribbon cable, while the Vision Link AR0144 connects using a vision link cable, which can be up to 15 meters long. So from here, you can see that the latency data for both the Tevi AR0144 and the vision link AR0144 are incredibly similar. Most of the samples are around 55 milliseconds, while there are some that are around 25 milliseconds and others that are just a little higher around 65 milliseconds, but they're very aligned. Mainly, this goes to show that the Vision Link interface provides the same latency results as connecting the sensor directly to the host processor via MIPI CSI2, even though it can be up to 15 meters away. So wrapping up, we conclude this is a pretty good way to deterministically measure camera sensor latency in a closed loop in an embedded system. Now, there are always improvements that could be made to the utility. One improvement would be to use a more efficient calculation for detection. Right now, we calculate an average of all of the pixels in the image when we really just need to pay attention to the region around the LED. We could reduce the frame analysis time needed considerably. Also, the utility doesn't control things like frame rate or automatic exposure control, which do have an impact on the latency measurement, so that could definitely be added. 
I am going to post a link in the video description to the utility on GitHub and a 3D model for the dark box. Comments are always welcome. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. I'm John Weber with TechNection. See you next time.